from sunny San Diego. I've had this uh, view for a couple years now and haven't exactly been sitting on my butt. I've made 68 modifications to it and uh, I want to show you today some of the ones on the chassis itself. There's about 20 of them. Today I'm only going to talk about the chassis part which is pretty much this cab and forward. It includes the uh, running gear, uh, the engine, transmission, uh, all the basic mechanical stuff. Uh, these things here have a three-year Mercedes warranty as opposed to the Winnebago side which is uh, one year. Mercedes has been making these for over 10 years now and so they've become very reliable and even uh, my granddaughter likes driving it. As I drive. One of the first mods I made after getting the RV was to change out the sway bar to a Hellwig. It's, uh, it's bigger and it helps control the swaying back and forth much better than the original sway bar that came with it. Um, also while I'm under here you can see the Coney shocks. Uh, they are about twice the size of the standard ones and I think they're a little better for the size of this rig and the weight of it. After that we added sumo springs front and rear. That helped to uh, stabilize it quite a bit. Yeah, this mod is so that those uh, roadside cones won't uh, hit your exhaust and rip it off. It's happened before. Here you can see my tire pressure monitors. Uh, I got them attached to the four back tires. The Borg metal valve stems. So these are really strong and you don't have to worry about the uh, extra weight from that uh, sensor. Uh, but I happen to like the Borg uh, valve stems. Uh, I don't really rotate my tires so it's no problem but if you did want to rotate them you'd have to uh, take the tires off the rims and switch them around. So yeah there's definitely pluses and minuses using uh, TPS systems like this. The one I got is kind of a cheap system. Uh, it just works the uh, four back tires and I was okay with that but uh, they're kind of a pain in that uh, the batteries run dead and sometimes I get uh, false signals from them. Um, even one time uh, after I had the stems put in, uh, I drove back home and started going off on the way home. Turns out the uh, discount tire had put 80 pounds of pressure in the tires and once they warmed up the overpressure signal went off and I had to pull over and figure out what the heck was going on there. With these alligator clips it's very easy to check the air pressure. Uh, no, it's no cap to remove. Just check that. Yeah, Winnebago, I don't know what you were thinking, but uh, you have three ways that you can charge up house batteries or the coach batteries located under the steps. Uh, you can run the generator, you can use the solar, or you can plug in electricity uh, into your house or campground, whatever. But there is no way to charge the chassis battery unless you're running the engine. What's up with that? Anyway, so what you need to do in that case is put in a little trickle charger. It's called a uh, trickle start and I've mounted mine right here next to the passenger seat and it gets wired right into there. And what that does is when your uh, house batteries are being charged, it'll also send uh, current to the chassis battery to keep that maintained and charged. Don't stay home without it. I'm always getting these little drips that uh, come off the uh, cab area and then they just drip right on the windshield. So I got this uh, white cover to go over the windshield. Yeah, the cover uh, keeps the sun from getting inside and fading any of the fabrics and uh, keeps it cooler also. The RV came with this excess module, uh, that's to work the radio controls through the steering wheel controls, so I had to remove that. Yeah, one of the issues I had stepping in is the carpet would slide. So to fix that, uh, I put some Velcro here to hold it down. It keeps the carpet from moving and I can also take it off later if I need to wash it. Okay, here's the uh, scan gauge. Uh, I got it set it on for the coolant temperature, transmission temperature, uh, horsepower, and miles per gallon. But you can you can change these to something else, uh, like say RPM. 
scan gauge is nice because Mercedes has an awful lot of sensors and this gauge uh, reads through the OBD port and uh, it'll tell you, you can read out uh, quite a few of those sensors such as water temperature, transmission temperature, uh, boost, uh, different things like that. How you hook it up is you just plug it into the OBD port down here and run the wire up. Um, I put mine on a little bracket here with Velcro so I can take it off. It's a place where I can see it when we're driving. Up in the dash area I added in a 12 volt outlet for the tire pressure monitoring system. It's a switched uh, 12 volt outlet now so we can use it for um, charging phones, whatever else we want to do it on the road. There is another outlet down below. Uh, that 12 volt outlet is uh, always on. I also added this uh, phone bracket to the dash because I do use my phone with Google Maps as a second GPS. And over to the left, uh, we put in a 12 volt outlet and a switch for my Garmin GPS. So that just rests on that bean bag. It works pretty well. And to help level the RV, uh, I added these uh, little level gauges in the cab area, one on the seat and one on the dash, and just mark the extremes. Uh, that's, that works well. I can see it right from the driver's seat. Yeah, another minor modification is adding some uh, vanity mirrors so you can see in the cab. See in the back. My last two chassis mods, it's a little hard to see since they're underneath the passenger seat. On our last trip to Florida, the boost solenoid uh, relay failed, so I upgraded it with a more reliable uh, Hersey model. And uh, I have a separate video to uh, show how to do that. And I also added a little timer chip in the circuit also. So this allows me, when I push the boost solenoid, um, to have batteries connected for, I programmed it for about two minutes. Uh, this allows me to run the microwave and I can draw from all three batteries rather than just the two coach batteries. We get it running with just the inverter running. Now let's start the microwave. This is the microwave running only on the coach batteries. Get the battery boost. And we have the three batteries connected. All right, this is the uh, microwave running on all three batteries, the two coach batteries and the chassis battery. Yeah, I really like that timer chip. It helps bring the current down to maybe 70 amps, which is uh, definitely doable and that won't really hurt the battery. So making these mods has been kind of interesting and uh, sometimes fun, sometimes frustrating, but uh, Anyway, I'm happy with the way they came out. Well, that wraps up my 20 modifications to the chassis. Uh, I have another video about the Winnebago side because I still got 48 more to go over. Anyway, uh, if you liked the video, give her a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Otherwise, this is Grandpa Ron signing off until the next video. Okay, climb in.